Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, this is uh, Unit 2, Lesson 5, and we're taking a look at modal trees, which is going to be involved in numeric prediction with a decision tree. So let's go ahead and go over to our studio and see if we can figure out what's happening. So the unique thing about a modal tree is that at each branch or at each split where you have a new node, it's using regression to try to better predict the values there. That's kind of what's happening. And so we're going to go through this. Now we're going to need a new library, a new package that we haven't discussed before called Party Kit. We're going to use that to provide a visual of our results. All right, so that's in line one. Now in line two, we're going to set our seed for consistency. And now in line three, we're going to go ahead and create our model. So we're going to use our training data to create our model. That's what we're going to do. And of course, we're still trying to predict the number of children that someone is going to have. And there's one thing that I need to clarify before I run the model. If you remember from the last video, we found out that the mean absolute error was like 1.3 and 1.7 for our models. Now, what that value actually means is that on average, our, our calculation for how many kids someone has is, is one. Now again, the interpretation of the mean absolute error depends on the context. But to have a value of, of 1.3 or 1.7, essentially means that we're off by as much as one child and that is quite a bit the difference between one child and two children is quite extensive especially if you're a parent so there's a lot of error in our model that we have to deal with and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to find something that is better than that value of 1.17 that we talked about in the prior video if our value is much better than 1.17 we know we're going in the right direction and when we did a regular numeric prediction tree where it's using just the mean, we got a value of 1.13. So we got a ways to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and in line three, I'm going to make my model or train my model. And that doesn't take very long. And now I'm going to display it. And you can see this is very messy. It's very hard to understand. It's very hard to appreciate what's going on here. So, but I'm going to try to talk about this first and then we're going to look at it together in the uh, using the party kit function, the party plot. So at the top here, I have my splits here. So the first split is at, uh, t at, a, at a salary of $20,754. So the first split is here. Go this way if it's, if it's less than, go this way if it's greater than. And what happens is this, if the earnings is greater than $20,754, you use line linear model number four. And this is the number of samples that are inside that one. So going down here, if it's less than $20,000, you go here, if the earnings is less than 2,000, you go down here, if education is less than 12.5, you linear model number one, and this is how many people are in linear model number one, and then over here, linear model two. And so down here, they give you the actual linear models that are used to calculate everything. So number for linear, uh, linear model number one, to calculate the number of kids, you multiply by age, by 0 0.03, education by 0 0.03, subtract, I guess earnings is negative. Zero means that they're not really using it. So zero was not really part of that particular uh, linear model. And then at the bottom you have your um, uh, d dummy variable here of marriage. And then uh, you can see here how it all works out each time. And then the last value right here, this 0 0.018, 0 0.718, 7181 is going to probably be the, the, the y-intercept. And then here's the equation for linear model two, et cetera, et cetera. Now again, this is hard to understand, so we're going to go ahead and make the, the party plot for this. Now I have to uh, make something clear. The party plot is not able to display the, the categorical variable, so you're going to see an error message, but we're still going to do this anyway. All right, so here's kind of what it looks like. You can see it's kind of the same breaks where if earnings is above 20,000, you use linear model 4. If earnings is below 20,000, you go here, and then the next break is at less, at greater than 2,200, less than 2,200, et cetera. So you have a, a visual here that, again, you can use for explaining things. Now, we're gonna go ahead now and use um, the predict function to get our to, on our test data. So we're gonna predict, and we're gonna do what we did last time, and we're gonna just check the summary statistics all right, so here we go. Uh, this is what we got right here. So 2.3, I think the mean for our last one was like 2.2, so it's not too bad. Um, looks very close 
run the correlation here between the predicted data and the actual results for the test data. 0.34, still not that great. And then lastly, we'll calculate the mean absolute error and we get 1.08. That's the best we did, but again, on average, our model is off by about one child, which is still very, very high. But we've gone through the process of how to develop a, mo a modal tree and the interpretation of the model. And so now you have an idea of how to do it. One thing I forgot to mention, I need to apologize for that, was that to make the actual modal tree, you use the MP5 function, M M5P function. And so the M5P function, M5P, that is part of the RWECA package uh, over here. You can see that. Let me zoom in to you for you so you can see this. The RWECA package. So this is why we loaded that package, RWECA. And so you're able to make modal trees by using the, the, R, the RWECA package. You can also make J48 and other types of decision trees, but we're not going to discuss those in this course. So that's pretty much how it works. So the difference between a, a regular numeric decision tree and a modal tree is that with the modal tree, it uses regression at each split of the data. And you can see that right here with the plots, oh, excuse me, with the plots right here, how it's using regression. So for this, for linear model four, it's used right here, et cetera. And so it gives you a different way of trying to predict future values. And you can see in this case, when we use the modal tree, it was slightly better than we just use a regular straight up um, numeric prediction tree, decision tree. Not much better, but still a difference. So I hope this makes sense for you and that you're able to understand what was happening. The code, of course, will be available at the uh, on the website in case you want to download it and play with things and try to come up with your own. And again, you know, the variables that we're using here, you can use other variables that are in the data set to try to come up with better models. So my name is Darren Thomas. I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques, and this is easier. Practical Applications of Machine Learning Algorithms in R. Take care.